الله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We thank him for everything that he has given us We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his entire household and all his companions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all and bless every single one of us. My brothers and sisters, I'm so impressed to be seeing even a larger number than there was earlier on. And I think when I was leaving, I thought to myself, after lunch, perhaps we will have three quarters of the crowd. I was wrong. I was wrong. Mashallah. Malaysia bole. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and ease. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. The path to Jannah, the blocks that are needed in order to build your paradise are quite much more simple than the blocks that were needed to build the Great Wall of China. They are much easier. They require dedication. That's it. They require dedication. A few moments ago, when the Great Wall of China was mentioned, I was thinking to myself how difficult it must have been for them to carry it, to put it on their backs, the rocks or the bricks or whatever it was, and to come and to make sure this and that. And with Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking for any excuse to give you and I Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking for anything little to give you paradise. But let that little be there. Do something about it. And another thing, don't spoil it and contaminate it with that which might overcast, overshadow in the last few moments. When a person is running a marathon and they're coming out first, and suddenly five meters before the finish line, they decide to have a bit of tetari. What happens? They cannot have the tea. Subhanallah. There are just a few moments to go. That's the time you need to work your best. You need to do your best, work your hardest, and you will achieve Jannah. Subhanallah. You'll achieve the goal. So to start with, we are Muslimin. We believe in the pillars of Islam. Amantu Billah. We believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We actually understand the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu And this is what makes us Muslimin. Where subhanallah, we have the shahada, we have the salah in order. I hope we have the salah in order. If you fulfill your salah correctly, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will be able to achieve jannah. If one day there was a man who came to the Prophet sallallahu and he asked him a question. And he says, you know what, uh, what is it that I should do as a Muslim if I want to attain paradise? So the Prophet sallallahu explained to him the basics, the basics. Without any extra that, the, than the farad, you know, than that which is completely obligatory. And when he looked at the Prophet ﷺ, he said, if I do this, will I, will I attain success? Meaning obviously Jannah. And so the Prophet ﷺ says, yes, you will. He says, I promise you, I will not increase from what you've said, nor will I decrease. And Rasulullah ﷺ, as the man walked away, told his companions, if you want to see a man from paradise, look at that man. That means he just promised that the pillars, I will fulfill them. That's it. Extra deeds, I promise you I won't do. That's what he's saying. Imagine, he's saying, I promise you I won't. I promise I'm not going to go more and I'm not going to come less. Subhanallah. But with us, we are encouraged to do more because we don't know where we have done less. So at least it will compensate. It will compensate. Sometimes our salah, the concentration in it is so bad that... Perhaps we don't even know how much of that salah is acceptable. But yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favors us. And he tells us something beautiful that if you read your sunnah, which is your voluntary prayer with your nafil, which is even more voluntary, or should I say, which is totally voluntary. In that case, it will fulfill any shortfall in your farad. Because the main thing Allah wants from you and I is the farad, that which is compulsory, obligatory. So we know the pillars of Islam, don't we? How many are there? Five pillars of Islam. The declaration of the shahada and the belief in it. The salah, the zakah, the sawm and the hajj. Agreed? Now let's go through some building blocks. We need to know. I want to know what are deeds that I can do to quickly fast track my entry into Jannah. Today everyone wants fast track. Mashallah. You know, you get to the airport and you see a long queue. And suddenly someone says, hey, would you like to come this way? And you look at it and you say, mm, yeah. You know, I recall this time when I landed, subhanallah, there was a long queue. And uh, as I'm joining this long queue, I'm saying, Ya Allah, I'm, you know, I just, it's going to be taking so long. The brothers are probably waiting for me. And guess what happened? 
somebody opened up a new queue just next to that and I was the first one who noticed so I walked to them and I was like right at the beginning right at the front and I said may Allah grant us Jannah in a similar way Wallahi without a joke may Allah grant us Jannah where we all know that we've done deeds we're not proud of agreed we all know that but we hope that a queue will open up and say those who actually uh, put their hands on the heads of the orphan come this side here and then we go and we say oh alhamdulillah whew, forget about all the sins I did but here's the orphan and because of that the Prophet says Ana wa kafilul yatimi fil jannah. myself and the one who looked after an orphan looked after the orphan he didn't want anything out of that besides looking after the child because the child had lost a father we will be like this in paradise. And he showed the two first fingers. He brought them together. So subhanallah, what an amazing way of entering Jannah. You did your deed, subhanallah. When it was most difficult, you put a scarf on your head for the sake of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. When it was extremely difficult, when people perhaps, you know, mocked at you, laughed at you, when perhaps at work you were threatened, at school you, this happened to you, and so on. But you still said, no, that's my identity, subhanallah. Who knows, perhaps that might just be your deed. That might just be the final block that would be your entry into paradise. Can it not be? Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. May we be resolute upon that which will grant us paradise. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. It's the small deeds, the little deeds that will give us paradise. Let's take a look at the Quran and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Jannah. And he speaks about those who believe. And he never ever says those who believe will go into paradise. It's not good enough to say I believe. If you believe, prove it. Prove it by working upon it. Let's see what you're doing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is why he says, Am hasibatum jannah. Do you really think you are going to go to paradise when certain things have not yet happened to you? What hasn't happened to you? Do you really think you will go into paradise when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not yet tested you to distinguish who from amongst you is sacrificing for the sake of Allah, has struggled for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and who from amongst you is patient and forbearant upon that which Allah has chosen for you. So you need forbearance, you need patience, you need beautiful deeds, you need really good deeds. And at the same time, every time Allah makes mention of Jannah, He says, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ أُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ الْجَنَّةِ Those who believe and do good deeds. For them, they will be the ones who will earn Jannah. They will earn paradise. Subhanallah. This is Jannah. It is not only achieved by saying, I believe. You need to do it. You need to act. You need to do deeds. You need to earn it. And this is why when the Prophet ﷺ was once asked by his companions, what are the deeds that will drive the maximum number of people into Jannah? Good question. I want Jannah. Fast track. I want Jannah quickly. So the people who will be in Jannah, what would have got them to Jannah? Please let us know. He says, Taqwa Allahi wa husnul khuluqi. Two things. The consciousness of Allah and good character. The fulfillment of the right of Allah is called Taqwa Allah. Or it could be encapsulated in the term Taqwa Allah. You're conscious of Allah. You fulfill your obligations unto Allah. Wa husnul khuluq means good character. It means your treatment of the rest of humanity. Whoever else is there as a human being, you have good character towards them. You speak to them with humility, no matter who you are. At the end of the day, when you came to this earth, you were totally naked. And when you leave, you shall leave similarly, without any dollar or cent with you. But everything you've spent has been written for you or against you. You need to know this. Whatever I've achieved in life is written for me or against me. But I'm taking none of it with me. It's actually how I spent my time on earth that counts. Amazing. So how are you spending your time on earth? This afternoon, we have come in order to learn knowledge. Let me tell you something about this afternoon. We have come here to learn knowledge. Do you agree? Say yes loudly if you agree. Okay, listen to the hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, Whoever has tread, whoever has walked upon a path 
trodden down a path, whoever has walked through a, a road, whoever has come towards knowledge, a path that leads to knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make for them, because of that, the path to paradise very easy. Which means to seek knowledge is fast tracking your entry into Jannah. To seek knowledge. Remember this hadith and don't forget it. Man salaka tariqan yaltamisu fihi ilman sahala Allahu bihi awlahu bihi tariqan ila al-jannah. Whosoever treads the path that leads to knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through it will make easy his or her path to paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with paradise and may he make it easy for us to learn. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really open our doors. This hadith is in Sahih Muslim and it is reported by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, the one that I've just mentioned. And the previous one where the Prophet sallallahu speaks of the two characteristics of those who will be in paradise, prevalent characteristics. It's a hadith. The Prophet sallallahu speaks about those who will be in paradise. Taqwallahi wa husnul khuluq. Don't forget this. So some of them will be there because of taqwallah. Some of them will be there, husnul khuluq. Some of them a combination of both. We hope that we can get there at least with something. Take a look at a woman who was feeling the sense of mercy towards a dog. Towards an animal. And she decided, okay, let me quench the thirst of this dog. And Allah says, and we've been taught this, that as a result of that compassion, subhanallah, Allah forgave her and told her, okay, Jannah. That's why I started the session by saying, Allah is looking for any excuse to give you Jannah. Let that excuse come forward. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has asked us really to do deeds as many as possible. Let's make mention of some of these deeds. To be kind to your parents and to serve your mother can fast track your entry into Jannah, according to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you take care of your aging mother, if you take care of your father, you will be granted paradise by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will be granted paradise by Allah on condition that the intention is there. You're a believing person who is trying. That's what it is. So when the Prophet sallallahu was faced with an individual who wanted to go out into jihad, he asked him, he says, are your parents alive? He says, yes. He says, well, go and serve them for in their service is paradise. That's a correct narration. Serve your parents. Why is there paradise in serving your parents? Can I let you know the truth, my brothers and sisters? Because it is very, very difficult. Your mother gets to 80 years old. She can talk whole day and tell you things that you don't like. That is your Jannah. That's what it is. It's not Jannah to just go so easy and say, okay, my mom, I can't stay with you anymore because you know what? You're quite tough to look after. That's what the Jannah is. When it becomes tough and hard, that's your mother. Don't forget. Keep quiet. She can tell you what she wants. Excuse her. You don't need to respond. So the reason why Jannah is given by serving your parents is because it is difficult. It's not so easy. It's something really that requires great patience and effort. It requires a great sacrifice to serve your parents. When they served you when you were young, subhanallah, there was a big difference. So subhanallah, when our parents looked after us, we were young. When we were young, they, they carried us, they took us, they changed our nappies to word it respectfully. And they made dua that we have a long life. And when they are old, what do we do for them? We only need to listen to them. We, you know, they're not going to pee on us, subhanallah. You, maybe sometimes we might need to cart them along. So they carried us too. And at the same time, we should never be making dua to Allah to say, Oh Allah, I'm looking after my mother for the last 15 years. When is this going to stop? Allahu Akbar. No, 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 no. We need to say, oh Allah, grant her Jannah, grant her goodness, grant me Jannah through the service and sacrifice well. that I have been making for my own mother. Subhanallah. This is Jannah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us Jannah through that deed as well. Another powerful block that you can build. And this is literally a block to build. That is to build or to contribute towards the building of one of the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala known as a masjid. The hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari reported by Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anh, he says, Man bana lillahi masjidan, bana Allahu lahu baytan fil jannah. That's one of the wordings, but the wordings are all quite similar. Whoever for the sake of Allah builds a house, a masjid, Allah will build for him a house in jannah. 
You have a house in paradise. Now, I believe not all of us are so wealthy that we can afford the $3 million masjid that is about to be built somewhere, perhaps. But at least we can contribute by one brick, two bricks. And do you know the mercy of Allah is such that when he knows that a brick from this whole building came from you, he's not going to say, okay, here's your brick, but you go to hell. No way. <laughs> your brick, you're going to come to Jannah and you will have an entire house. Because Allah is so merciful, He will multiply it 700 fold and even more. That's the mercy of Allah. So this is why if you cannot afford to build a whole home or a whole house of Allah, meaning the masjid, at least contribute towards it. At least do something that, that will result in the goodness, the house of Allah being elevated, so on. Serve on it, call people towards it. And by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will be able to achieve much. Let's look at yet a beautiful way of earning Jannah. It's a struggle, but it's beautiful. The hadith is so lovely. The Prophet ﷺ guarantees Jannah to a person who can guarantee him the correct usage of two organs. May Allah forgive us, may Allah grant us goodness, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to control our tongues and our private parts. He says, Whoever guarantees me the correct use of what is between their cheeks and what is between their thighs, I guarantee them a place in Jannah. Subhanallah. Watch your tongue and watch how you use your private parts. It's a direct, clean-cut hadith. It's open. Like we said earlier this morning, we don't need to be shy when it comes to earning Jannah, the straight path. We need to know it. We need to talk about it. So that is loud and clear. We hope and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens our doors. Let's go back to the masjid, to the house of Allah. There is another block. When we say block, we're not talking of blockage. We're talking of building blocks, bricks. Okay? To build your Jannah. The hadith says, whoever goes to the masjid every morning and evening, walks to the masjid every morning and evening for every step that they take. And obviously, if you're going with your proton by the will of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, for every time the wheel spins, I would say, you would have your place in Jannah being decorated for you, subhanallah. Your abode in Jannah is being made clear for you, subhanallah. Imagine. Just by going to the masjid. So make it a habit, my beloved brothers, especially to go to the house of Allah. Make it a habit to go there whenever you can for any salah. May Allah strengthen me as well. If you go early morning, you go in the afternoon, in the evening to the house of Allah solely for the sake of Allah. He says, I know you've come to my house. I will prepare you a house in the hereafter. That's a hadith. Also in Sahih Muslim reported by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. Then for those who have wealth, mashallah, you can go for Umrah and Hajj. You know how beneficial that is. Al-Umratu ila al-Umrati kaffaratul lima baynahuma wal hajjul mabruru la jaza'a lahu illa al-jannah. The hadith says, when you, con when you make Umrah more often, Allah forgives the sins between the two Umrahs. So I made one now, I make one next year. It does not mean let me sin as much as I can between the two Umrahs because I'm, you don't know if you're going to make it back there. But it's speaking about the minor sins that you may not know that you've committed. You become cleared between the two Umrahs. And as for Hajj, the same hadith, the hadith reported by Imam Ahmad in his Musnad, the Prophet ﷺ says, as for the Hajj that is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it has no reward besides Jannah. What more do you want? It means the ultimate reward for a deed is actually paradise. In this world, you may suffer, you may struggle. Part of your fast tracking into Jannah is to bear patience upon what you have been inflicted with or the condition Allah has kept you upon. Take a look at a hadith where the Prophet ﷺ was speaking about the blind people. And you know what he says? He says in Sunan At-Tirmi, there's, there's a hadith where Rasulullah ﷺ has said, whosoever bears patience upon the fact that Allah has taken away their eyesight, Allah gives them Jannah in return. Not for their blindness, but for their patience. So if someone cannot see, not only at the beginning of your life, look, a lot of us, sometimes we grow a little bit older and sometimes, subhanAllah, we know the older people, some of them, they fail to see at a certain time. Allah says, if you are patient with that, it's not easy. It's not a joke, subhanAllah. If you are patient, 
If you thank Allah for the other countless things He's given you, and you say, Oh Allah, this one thing you haven't given me, but I still thank you for everything you have. Allah says, In return for that, and the beauty of your heart, and the sabr, we will grant you paradise. What a beautiful way of earning Jannah. Let's take a look at another way of earning Jannah. The hadith speaks of a man from the previous nations who was granted Jannah solely because he used to forgive those or give time to those who owed him money because he was a rich man. And whenever he used to send his debt collectors to those who had to collect the debts on his behalf, he would tell his debt collector quickly, hey, look, if you come across a poor person who's struggling, leave him and go to the next person. And the, the, the debt collector would say, why? He says, let's forgive him, perhaps Allah will forgive us. Subhanallah. Let's give him some time, perhaps Allah will give us respite. So Allah says in this hadith, reported by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa فَلَقِيَ اللَّهَ فَتَجَاوَزَ عن. When this man met Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah forgave him. Allah said, you know what? You forgave others, so we are forgiving you. You earn Jannah. This is why my beloved brothers and sisters, I want to mention a powerful incident but just in two lines when abu bakr as siddiq radiallahu anhu was faced with the accuser of his daughter the mother of the believers aisha radiallahu anha someone accused her of committing adultery and whatever else in terms of dirt that they had accused her of na'udhu billah may allah safeguard all of us abu bakr as siddiq radiallahu anhu made a promise and he said i'm never going to spend on this relative of mine who happens to spread spread the tale if you spread tales you are blocking your chances of going to Jannah. If you have pride and arrogance, you're blocking your chances of entering paradise. But in this case, you are asked to forgive someone who has really wronged you. A lot of us don't forgive. I don't want to forgive, but they haven't really wronged you. You are wrong sometimes. I don't want to forgive him. But who knows? In the court of Allah, maybe you are the one who's wrong. How do you know? Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu was told, وَالْيَعْفُ وَالْيَصْفَحُ Surat Nur. What a powerful verse. Allah says, learn to forgive. Forgive. Don't you want Allah to forgive you? So then forgive others. It's something that's not easy. Not easy to forgive others. Try and condition your heart to a, to a point where you do not hold it against anyone. You are so satisfied. Even those who have tried to crush you, they only get goodness from you. Like a rose. A rose leaves the strongest scent on the heels of the one who crushed it. If I just smell the rose, I get a scent. But if I really want, I must tear it apart, break it pieces, crush. Then I get, ooh, smelling good. But I just broke it. I just crushed it. I just destroyed its life. Well, let's take a lesson from that. Subhanallah. Have your heart such that you have a link with Allah. Oh Allah, if I get to Jannah, I don't mind what these people are doing to me now and here. For as long as I get paradise, that's it. That's what I want. This is the path. This is the, the path we want. If I get paradise, even if you tell me that your worst enemy has to be your neighbor, are you ready? You've got to say, yes, I'm ready because there he's not going to be your worst enemy. He's going to be your best friend. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah. Just keep on saying Ameen. The reason is, we don't know when is the moment of acceptance of dua. So I like to keep on repeating these duas. So the Ameen must come in so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us Jannah. May He grant us Jannah. Oh, mashallah. Ameen. 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 So my brothers and sisters, that was another brick to build our paradise. One of the ways of earning Jannah. Let's look at yet another one. Did you ever know that by you going to visit someone who is sick or ill, you are already earning a spot and a position in paradise on condition that you're doing it for the sake of Allah. Did you ever know that? Why? Because to make someone feel good and to pray for people who are struggling is actually a godly act. It's an act of goodness. And this is why the hadith says, when the Prophet ﷺ speaks about it, it's powerful. He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask the people on the day of judgment that, I was sick and you did not visit me. And the person will say, well, how could you have been sick when you are Rabbul Alameen? You know, it doesn't make sense. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, didn't you hear that my slave so-and-so was sick and ill? Well, had you visited them or him or her, you would have found me there. 
which means it would have drawn you closer to Allah. Your chances to enter Jannah have suddenly multiplied. So there are clear cut a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that speak about earning paradise through visiting the ill and the sick and reaching out to the destitute and those who are perhaps underprivileged. May Allah subhanahu wa taala grant us Jannah. Similarly, another powerful building block is when you greet each other with assalamu alaikum genuinely. If you are genuine and you really mean what you say, you can earn Jannah. Did you know that? Well, here's the hadith. It's a powerful hadith. And it's there in all, most of the books of hadith. Hadith of Abdullah ibn Salam radiallahu anhu. He says, he heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ayyuhan nas, O people. Now the end of the hadith speaks about entering paradise. And I'm going to tell you the end before I tell you the beginning so that we can put it into perspective. At the end he says, if you do these deeds, you will enter Jannah with ease, with peace. Tadkhulu Jannah ta rabbikum bi salam. You will enter the Jannah of your Rabb. It belongs to Allah with ease, with peace. So what is it that he said you should do? Well, listen to the deeds. Ayyuhan nas, O people, afshu salam. Spread the peace. The peace means the greeting, assalamu alaikum, as well as the peace as in the opposite of war, the opposite of fighting, the opposite of all these you know, this turbulence that you have. Sometimes it's on a small scale in your home between siblings. Sometimes it's husband and wife. May Allah safeguard us. Sometimes it is parent and child. Sometimes it is relatives, laws and in-laws. I don't know why the law has to come into that all the time. But anyway, the truth is, if you say, Assalamu alaikum, you are saying, may peace be upon you and the mercy of Allah and his blessings. If you are genuine, you won't harm that person because you just made a dua, may peace be upon you. But now I'm at war with you. So that's hypocrisy. Like I said moments ago, we rather be honest and people then figure out that, okay, it was worth it to be honest than to pretend like everything is okay. And when you go, you're so upset. So you greet someone, Assalamu Alaikum, oh my sister. And you know, uh, I, it's not a brother giving a sister a hug, but two sisters, subhanAllah. And they're giving each other a big hug and at the end of the day, you know, come straight into the back. Why did you even say salam? Why did you bother? You want Jannah to be fast tracked for you. Just be genuine. When you say Assalamu Alaikum, don't harm. Don't backbite. Don't gossip. Don't enter into their lives in a negative way. Speak good about them. That's it. Speak good about someone behind their backs and you will find Allah will grant you Jannah. So even if I have something negative to be said about you, I don't need to say it to people. I can complain to Allah. No ghibah when it comes to Allah. Oh Allah, the sister, this is what she did to me. The brother, this is what he did to me. There's no harm because that's my Allah. He owns me and owns you. I'm complaining to him. But don't say, oh Allah, destroy them, break them, paralyze them. No, 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 not at all. Say, oh Allah, ease the situation. Soften their hearts. Grant them goodness. That is more godly. That is the quality of a believer. I said, oh Allah, soften the heart. So the hearts are softened. But when I say, oh Allah, break them. <laughs> Who knows? They might be on the same path. And while they're being broken, I'm affected also. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us. You know, if you're living in the same building and say, oh Allah, destroy their home. And suddenly the building comes crashing. And then you're told, okay, that we were just destroying the home there. But you don't know yours is destroyed in the process. So we don't want that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Really, we need to think. So the Prophet ﷺ says, when you say salam, say it genuinely, say it properly, say it with a heart. And this is why we don't like it when people just come across and say, you know, and that's it. What did you say? You just heard the kum at the end. You know, say it properly. Assalamu alaikum, my brother. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And respond. Because it's, imagine, you know, they say, and this is something we learn. The first impressions are the lasting. Do you agree? Imagine someone meets you and they say, may the peace of Allah be upon you. And his blessings and his mercy. The non Muslims will be taken aback. Look at how this was worded. But for us, we've just kept it on our tongue. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And you don't even know what you're saying. There's one brother who greets me all the time, and he, the only thing I hear is atu at the end. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And I say, what's going on? Subhanallah. May Allah make it easy. When we are genuine with the way we say it, we will be genuine to protect each other. So I'm guaranteeing you that I won't harm you and I will protect you as best as I can from harm. And I'm asking on top of that, that Allah blesses you and has mercy on you. And the malaika are saying, Oh Allah, grant this person the same. Did you know that? The angels are saying, Oh Allah, grant this person the same. I'm saying, may the peace of Allah be upon you and his mercy and his blessings. And the angels are saying, Oh Allah, even this one, give him, give him the same. 
And whose dua is more powerful, mine or the angels? That's for you to figure out. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all. May Allah grant us Jannah. Amen. You know, people wonder, why do you keep on repeating these little du'as? Today you know, right? Alhamdulillah. So, Afshu salam, spread the salam. Afshu salama. Wa at'imu ta'ama. Feed the food. To who? To your family members, to the others, to your friends, to the poor and destitute. Reach out to them with food. Feed them. Feed them. Why? Because Allah has kept it such that in feeding there is a lot of goodness. When you sit around the table and you eat, it's supposed to bring you together. Nowadays we gossip. You know, before it used to be sisters, nowadays even the brothers, they say, hey, we need to talk, come, let's meet over dinner. And over dinner, you're talking about, hey, that guy and this guy, didn't it, you just used to be, you know, Mary and, and, and all the others. Now it's come to Peter and John as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us from amongst those. You feed each other, goodness, you know, brilliant feeding, especially the destitute. And even in your family, it's becoming more and more difficult to sit and eat together as a family. So if you sit and eat together, subhanallah, and you literally feeding one another, it increases your chances of entering into paradise. You have a good relationship. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. There was a time I remember when I was young, without a joke, breakfast, we used to get up early morning myself, and I've got several brothers and sisters, mashallah, in total we are nine, brothers and sisters. Mother and father makes it 11. And my mom used to make us a whole flask of tea early morning. And we used to have bread, and butter that's it and I recall very clearly before we used to go to school get up early morning and we used to read our salah and we used to all get ready and everyone used to come and sit around this table that now seems so small but that time it's the same table we have now but it seems so small and it was so large we all used to sit around laugh and smile and today with my own children subhanallah I just hope and wish that the day comes where I can let them taste what I tasted when I was young we try but trust me it will never be the same The value of it, priceless. Anyway, getting back to feeding the food, reach out to those who are in need. This would mean that don't be wasteful in your own food. No. We go to a restaurant, we start ordering food, and we've ordered much more. We ordered with our eyes, subhanallah, more than our bellies can take. And the next thing is we've had one or two little pieces and we're gone, and we paid for it. And then imagine if the waiter has to come to you and say, Sir, you've left the food, you have to eat it. You say, hey, I paid for it. So what? I recall here, there's a restaurant called Tupai Tupai. Am I right? <laughs> the, uh, how I remember it is because they had, they, I was looking for the pies. I thought each person gets two pies. <laughs> but we didn't get any pies. So I remember the name and I never forget it. When we went in there one day, somewhere, somewhere down the, the, I don't know exactly which uh, suburb it was, they had a sign. And the sign says, the buffet, you know, you, if you leave any food, you're going to pay. You're going to pay for what you've left. And I questioned, what, what does it say? And they told me, well, did you know in Singapore, a lot of the restaurants have this? And I said, wow, subhanallah. If this was in the Middle East, people would be paying more for what they've left than for what they're eating. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant our brothers and sisters in the Middle East Jannah as well. We love them, we do. Although we just said something, but it's, <laughs> it's a reality. It's a fact, we need to deal with it. And if we have the same problem, we need to deal with it. So don't waste the food, not at all. Don't waste your food. Use it to earn Jannah by feeding it to someone. Simple as that. Learn to collect. Say, can I please take this away? You are fortunate. In this country, you have people who will still accept the food. In my country, we have people. As soon as you leave a restaurant outside, there are a few people who would appreciate it really to the core. Some countries, there is no way that there will be a person out there who's going to take your food. It has to go into the bin. Astaghfirullah. So order a little bit. I want to call on all of you to do one thing from today on. Order half of what you want to eat whenever you go out to eat. Is that a promise? Look at how quiet inshallah. <laughs> Don't play with the bellies of the people, mashallah. The bellies are very, very important, aren't they? Subhanallah. Wallahi, order half of it and see how healthy you feel. See how closer you are to the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. See how healthy you are. Wallahi, without a joke. And you will be earning Jannah, the excess wealth and money you can give it out for a charity. Someone will buy the food that they've never seen in their lives. 
So the next time you go into whatever, the pizza hut, whatever they call it, here, see all the names are being whispered, I can hear them, subhanallah. <laughs> Order a small pizza and ask them to have a new size called extra small. <laughs> Mashallah. Order a small one. Not a, you don't have to order. You know what? And I've got the sickness as well. Sometimes we go in and we say, can I have the extra large? They say, we've got extra, extra large. Okay, can I have that one? <laughs> but why? For what? One thing is cheese is not that healthy for you. I hope no one from amongst us here owns a pizza place. Subhanallah. <laughs> but at the same time, what you need to know is the excess. You're going to leave it. You're going to waste it. It's unhealthy. And then, you know what? Sometimes we make a mistake and we say, I paid for it. I better eat it. And you... And you know, we, and then when you get up, you're like walking off the restaurant as though you're expecting. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all our women who are expecting and make it easy for them. Inshallah. Now, I, I said it in a respectful way, inshallah. That's why I made a dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah. I mean. So. This beautiful hadith where the Prophet ﷺ speaks of at'imu ta'am, it is so small, but it has such a broad meaning. We've only touched on the tip of the iceberg. Subhanallah. Wasilul arhama, another way of earning Jannah. Another way of earning Jannah. F maintain your family relations. Why does Allah say this? Because it's hard. It's very difficult. You have to have politics in every single home without exception. I took the liberty of saying that. Extended family, maybe not in your nuclear family, but in your extended family, if you have a large extended family, it's impossible not to have politics. Who from amongst you has absolutely no politics in your entire extended family? Put up your hand. I don't see a single, well, mind you, I see half a hand. That means I've only got half politics. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May, that means Allah has given every one of us an opportunity to engage in a difficult act of worship that will fast track our entry into Jannah. That's what it means. Because if Allah didn't want it, He wouldn't have kept it that way. There's politics between father and son and so on. I don't even need to go into the details. Silul arham bil mukafi man idha a person who maintains the family ties is not the one who has a tit-for-tat relationship. You give me, I give you. You come to my house, I come to yours. You invite me, I invite you. No, it is a one who goes out of his way to build a, or to, to, to rebuild a broken relationship. And in order to do that, you have to sometimes say, I'm sorry, when it's actually not your fault. You have to sometimes go out and say, look, I really, I'm sorry. We need to sort this thing out. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala soften our hearts. May he Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use us to build relationships and not to destroy them. So the hadith continues, Silul Arham. Afshu salama wa at'imu ta'am. Wa silul arhama wa sallu bil wa nasu niyam. Fulfill voluntary prayers when everyone is asleep. So people are asleep and I get up. Why am I getting up? I'm not showing off to anyone because no one knows I'm getting up. Only Allah knows. So I'm showing off to Allah and Allah alone. You do deeds, do them for Allah. No one needs to know. This is why the hadith speaks of the, the quality of a charity where even the left hand does not know what the right hand has spent. That person will be granted a special place on the day of judgment. And ultimately, if you're a VIP on the day of judgment, you have to end up in paradise. Inshallah, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. رَجُلٌ تَصَدَّقَ بِصَدَقَةٍ فَأَخْفَاهَا A man who gave or a woman who gives out a charity and kept it a secret. Sometimes it is worth your while to announce it if it is going to encourage others genuinely. There's no harm. But wherever you can, keep it between you and Allah. No one knows what you've done. After you die, people might find out, hey, this person used to give me something. Every month I used to come and collect Where's the person? Oh, he's passed away. Allah irhamu. Allah grant him Jannah or her Jannah. Keep these deeds. So at the end of the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says, those who fulfill their, these deeds, they will enter Jannah with so much of ease. These are some of the blocks that I've made mention of and let's continue and make mention of a few more. A powerful block. Do you want to know one? Powerful building block. Paradise. One day, a man 
by the name of Rabi'ah ibn Ka'b al-Aslami radiallahu anhu, he says, I was with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and I came to him with some water for him to make wudu. And he says, ask and you will be given. Which means, whatever you want, ask and you'll be given. Imagine the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa telling any one of us, ask, say what you want and you'll be given. What would we say? Good question, isn't it? We would be making dua for dunya. Oh Allah, I need to get married. Oh Allah, I need a car. I need a house. I need a salary. I need money. The ring gate is going weak. Ya Allah, strengthen it. <laughs> Say Amin. Come on, man. Amin. Woo, that was a loud Amin. MashaAllah. I think your minister of finance will know why it's becoming strong. MashaAllah. So SubhanAllah, we would ask all sorts of things. But Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his companions were so in love with him. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, As'aluka murafaqataka fil jannah. I just want to be with you in paradise. Wow, subhanallah. Imagine he, he was told, sell, he's being told, sell tu'ta. Ask, you will be given. And he says, I ask you your companionship in paradise. Wow. Do you know what the Prophet sallallahu says? Fa'a'inni ala nafsika bi kathratis sujood. Yes, so help me to get you that by prostrating a lot. Find yourself in sajda often and inshallah you'll get what you've just asked for. Subhanallah, with us even the fard salah is a mission. Do you agree? It's a mission, meaning mashallah we might be reading it but hey, sometimes you say oh no, I just... I just put my head down now and look, it's already Adhan. That's your Jannah. Come on, get up. That's your paradise. This might be just the last time you can do that. May Allah make it easy for us. Really, we become so lazy. But what are you doing in Salah? You need to know. You are putting your head on the ground for the one who made you. That's what you're doing. You say, oh, you who made me. I love you. I declare that you are the highest. You are the greatest. I'm praising you. I am nothing. I am at your mercy. So leave your head on the ground. Go into that posture and position, even outside Salah. Go into that posture, position. You get a lot of comfort from it. You can praise Allah in that posture. No harm. Obviously, Salah is ideal. But sometimes you may even want to go into the posture because it makes you feel spiritually good, closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aqrabu ma yakunu abdu li rabbihi wa huwa sajid. The closest that a slave is to Allah is when he is in the position of prostration. May Allah accept it from us. May he make it easy for us. So that's also another beautiful, beautiful way of earning Jannah. Then we get to some of the ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Or we've spoken about the ahadith, but let's look at some of the verses of the Quran. And we've already mentioned the ahadith, but I want to draw your attention to some beautiful verses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about making haste, rush, don't delay when it comes to seeking the forgiveness of Allah. Because asking Allah's forgiveness is one way of fast-tracking your Jannah. If I say, Astaghfirullah, oh Allah, I seek your forgiveness, by the will of Allah, if I return to Allah, if I repent to Allah, we are all human beings, aren't we? We've all done deeds that we're not proud of, haven't we? At the same time, I might lose hope. We might be thinking today, we're listening about Jannah, but I've done such a bad deed. Myself included, we've done a lot of deeds we, we, we shouldn't have done and perhaps we're not proud of and we need the forgiveness of. So Allah says, don't worry, we know. If you make haste and come quickly back to us, no matter what you've done, we will still give you paradise. So listen to these two verses. The first one, verse number 133 of Surah Al-Imran. Allah says, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ Make haste towards seeking the forgiveness of Allah or make haste towards the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and paradise. As a result, you get paradise. Ask Allah, oh Allah, forgive me. Oh, that's a powerful verse. The verse continues long, meaning that it's a long verse. But I've only mentioned the main part of it. But there is another direct verse. Addressing those who've committed adultery, those who've committed immorality, those who've done bad deeds. 
Allah says, Subhanallah. Verse number 136 of Surah Al Imran. Those who have oppressed themselves, those who have committed immorality. Immorality includes all these sins, the fahisha. It includes adultery, fornication, what have you, all other sorts of immorality, immoral behavior, you know, being hooked onto pornography, everything else that is immoral is included in this verse. So Allah is addressing us and saying, those who have engaged in this type of behavior, you still have hope for Jannah. You still have hope. What is the hope? Allah says, those who have done these bad deeds and they have oppressed themselves, then they remember Allah. They regret, oh, what did I do? Dhakarullah, fastaghfaru li dhunubihim. And then they say, oh Allah, I seek your forgiveness for what I've just done. And Allah says, and who forgives besides Allah? So they're doing the right thing. Who forgives besides Allah? Allah is the forgiver. And then they do not continue in their bad way. The same verse says, وَلَمْ يُصِرُّوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ They do not knowingly and intentionally continue in their bad ways. They come out, they ask Allah's forgiveness, and they say, Ya Allah, forgive me, I've wronged myself. And they don't continue in that evil. Allah says, أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتِ Allahu Akbar. Those are the people who will earn Jannah. Listen to the entire verse. أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ مِّن رَبِّهِمْ وَجَنَّاتٌ تَجْرِي مِن تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا نِعْمَ أَجْرُ الْعَامِلِينَ For those will be forgiveness from Allah and entry into paradise. Subhanallah. Forever and ever you will be in paradise. Allah says, what a good recompense for those who did good what was the good you did you just committed a sin the good you did was you repented to allah so seeking forgiveness of allah will fast track your entry into jannah definitely that is your jannah you want paradise ask allah's forgiveness whenever you have committed a sin regret a sign of iman is that you regret the Prophet ﷺ says, when your good deed makes you feel good and your bad deed makes you regret, it's a sign that you're a true believer. Because if you don't believe, you can do bad deeds and you say, hey, wow, that was nice. And then you carry on and you're planning it again. That means where's your iman? But if you're a mu'min, you feel so guilty about it. You feel, no, I shouldn't have done this. It's bad. Subhanallah. So remember this, Allah has addressed directly in verse number 136 of Surah Al Imran, those who have engaged in immorality and sin and transgressed against themselves. He says, if you ask for forgiveness, we will forgive your sins and we will give you paradise for eternity. Forever and ever, paradise will be yours. And what a great deed, what a good recompense for you who have just done such a great deed. And what's the deed? Repentance. So isn't that such a beautiful verse? Subhanallah. Doesn't it give us hope? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah. Amen. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the women as well in such a beautiful way. You know, the Arabic language is such that linguistically, if there are a group of people and from amongst them they're masculine and feminine, you can use a masculine pronoun to refer to all and the women are included in that. Subhanallah. Perhaps because... Hawa, may peace be upon her, was created from Adam. MashaAllah. That's just my sixpence, alhamdulillah. You know, it's, it's not from Revelation, but I'm just saying. Linguistically, yes. When you use in the Arabic language the male pronoun, plural, it includes the women as well. But in the case of Jannah, Allah separates the two. And Allah says, wait, we want to even give the women good news. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَن يَعْمَلْ مِنَ الصَّالِحَاتِ مِن ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ Whoever does good deeds, whether they are male or they are female, 
for as long as they are believers, Allah says, for them will be paradise. Imagine Allah is speaking about both. Why did he decide to speak about women as well? To give them hope. They are an important part of society and community and the ummah. They are the mothers of all those who had given so much in terms of sacrifice for the ummah. And they too have sacrificed in an even bigger way, but perhaps hidden from the eye. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all the sacrifices of our mothers and grant them Jannah and grant us Jannah through their service. May He make us more patient and tolerant with our own mothers. Myself included, mashallah. Myself included. I mean, say I mean for me, come on. <laughs> mashallah. So this is a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He has definitely blessed us with it. I want to end with one or two beautiful verses. The one where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks in Surah Qaf about Jannah and how it will be brought closer for certain people. Who are these people? I want to know. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this is verse number 31 of Surah Qaf. وَأُزْلِفَتِ الْجَنَّةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ غَيْرَ بَعِيدٍ Jannah has been brought close, close for the muttaqeen. Muttaqeen means those who are conscious of Allah. غَيْرَ بَعِيدٍ It's not far, it's not far. Jannah has been brought close for those who are muttaqeen, who are conscious of Allah. So who are they? Allah says, هَذَا مَا تُوْعَدُونَ لِكُلِّ أَوَّابٍ حَفِيرٍ This is what has been promised. This is what has been guaranteed for every awwab and hafir. Who is an awwab? Awwab is a person who constantly returns to Allah. A person who turns to Allah. A person who repents to Allah. A person who constantly goes back towards Allah. If they are drifting, they quickly go back. That is known as al-awwab. One who constantly goes back to Allah. Everything, every time you go back to Allah. And hafir is a person who protects his promise unto Allah. He protects himself. He tries or she tries to protect himself on her and or herself to earn the pleasure of Allah. Let us try our best to protect ourselves so that we can earn the pleasure of Allah. You and I know what's right and wrong, but we just need the power to walk on the path, the acceptance to walk upon it. Umar ibn Khattab عنه, was once asked about the path and he spoke about how a person would be having to protect themselves while walking through a rose bush perhaps where there are so many thorns and you would have to protect your clothing and yourself while you're walking through that path. And definitely on this straight path, there will always be shaitan trying to poke us and prick us and trying to harm us and divert us. Don't be diverted. Be an awab. Be a person who turns back to Allah. Allah says, Jannah will come near for you. Be a hafiz, a person who protects as best as he can his Islam, his promise unto Allah or hers. Subhanallah. Then Allah continues to explain who are these people? Who is the awab and the hafiz? Man rahmana bil ghaybi wa jaa bi qalbim Whoever has protected himself unseen. May Allah make it easy for us. You know what that means? That means when nobody is watching and everything is facilitated to commit wrong and you just protect yourself. You say, no, no one's watching. And at the same time, no one's watching. So you don't just sleep over Fajr. You still get up. You're, all on, you're, you're on your own, but you still got up. No one's watching, but you're still obeying Allah's command because you know Allah is watching. Allah is watching. The amount of contentment long term that you achieve by having protected yourself is far greater than the fake, false, temporary delight that you might have felt for a split moment whilst engaging in sin. May Allah forgive us and grant us all the strength to walk on the path. And the beautiful way Allah words it, He says, Man khashi rahmana bil 
whoever is fearful of Ar-Rahman, of the most merciful, he could have said, Man khashi Allah, whoever is fearful of Allah. He says, whoever has the khashiyah, khashiyah is a far deeper word, subhanallah. It would include the humbleness, the, the a person who has softened towards Allah, towards Ar-Rahman. He uses his name Ar-Rahman in this instance. Because he wants to show you and I that he is the most forgiving. He loves us. Every rule that he has placed is only because of his mercy. We think, oh, it's hard. and this. That is his mercy. Allah knows what is best for you. When you go to school, you study and you sweat and you spend all night and book after book. Because you know, I have to study because I have to pass the exam. And when the examination comes into play, you need to write the answers. You get there early, you work hard, you toil. Subhanallah, you fulfill the rules. They tell you no eating, no drinking, no this, no that. No looking in the other direction. You don't look anywhere. Why? Because if I just got to look here. Where's my paper? If I do this, looking at somebody else's paper. Oh, lower your gaze, brother. MashaAllah. You will be disqualified. You're cheating. Appreciate your paper. And I'm not calling women paper. But at the same time, it's an example to learn from. It really is something interesting. That's your examination. You look at it. Look at your paper. All these rules, we were ready to accept them for a little mere examination here in the world. What about the examination that's going to take us to paradise? In this world, you're going to get a PhD. Okay, you got a top job and you earn 50 million ringgits a year. Mashallah, brilliant. Did that get you Jannah? No. It can, but it didn't. If you have your connection with Allah, yes indeed. If not, you've suffered a loss. So this is why Allah uses the term Ar-Rahman in this verse to say whoever is conscious of, of Ar-Rahman and he comes on the day of judgment. Allahu Akbar, I can cry when I, when, I, when I say this. Anyone who comes on the day of judgment with a heart that is softened towards Allah, Allah says for you is Jannah. Anyone who comes on the day of judgment with a heart that is turning towards Allah and softened is definitely going to be told enter paradise with ease no harm nothing this is the day that you will be living you will be the day of eternity you're going to be going in there eternally how did we get paradise we got it because we had a good heart we had a good heart, not that I commit sin and say, but my heart is good. That's not what is meant. Some people commit sin day and night and they say, hey, don't judge me. I've got a good heart. That's wrong. You cannot use the phrase, don't judge me in order to run away and justify sin and bad behavior. No, we won't judge you, my brother or my sister. But remember, Allah is the judge. He has the right to judge you. He knows. So he will take into consideration your deeds as well as your heart. Allah definitely knows the heart. So if you have a qalb, munib, munib also is referring to those who turn back to Allah, who return to Allah, the heart that is softened towards Allah, Allah will say, enter Jannah. So now we've heard, inshallah, how to earn Jannah and some of the blocks and the, the, the building blocks that we would actually, that would help us to our entry into paradise. May Allah grant us paradise. And the last thing I want to mention in Surah Yasin, you know the story of Yasin? We all say Surah Yasin, Surah Yasin. But do you know the story of Yasin? The story is of a man. And that man went to his people and called them towards Allah and told them to follow the messengers. And they didn't listen. They didn't want to listen. And he kept on and he persisted and he insisted and they didn't want to listen. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَاءَ مِنْ أَقْصَ الْمَدِينَةِ رَجُلٌ يَسْعَى A man from the innermost part of the city came running. And what did he say? He says, O oh my people, follow the messengers. Those who ask of you nothing. They don't ask of you any recompense. Subhanallah, follow them. And then Allah says, and this is what I'm trying to get to, Subhanallah. It was told to him, enter paradise. The man was told, enter paradise. What did he do? What was his deed? His deed was he used to call everyone else towards goodness. What did we say earlier on this morning? 
We said you call others towards goodness, it will make it easy for you to walk on the path. So call as many people as you can towards goodness. Don't be afraid. Don't be shy. Call them, your family members, your colleagues, whoever else you can. If you're really so, so embarrassed, astaghfirullah, at least print it in a book or have a DVD or a CD and give it to them. Say, I'd like you to know my faith. I'd like you to know what I, something that really helped me. Give, take this. It really helped me. Give it to them, no matter who they are. Tomorrow they will come and say, Wallahi, my sister, that changed my life. And then you can cry and say, Oh Allah, all I need from you now is acceptance. May Allah accept us. Sometimes our deeds are so poor that the hope we have in entering Jannah through our deeds is almost nil. But we have hope that, Oh Allah, whoever has been guided through an effort that you've allowed us to make, perhaps we might enter paradise through their deeds because we're going to get a full reward for whatever they've done. Maybe. May Allah grant us Jannah. So when he was told enter Jannah, do you know what he says? Ya layta qawmi ya'lamuna bima ghafara li rabbi wa ja'alani min al How I wish and I hope that my people knew how Allah gave me Jannah and honored me, forgave me and he's granted me all this. I just wish my people knew what has happened to me. Subhanallah. Which means what I did was not in vain. I tried my capacity. Every one of us has a different capacity. But in your own capacity, Allah knows it. Call towards Allah. And remember, come to the path. Earn Jannah. Today we've mentioned so many points. How many of these points do we have? The more, the greater the chances. So, at least if you have one solid point, sometimes there is a certain thing that's so difficult for you to do, but you only do it for Allah. Wallahi, perhaps that will be the winning ticket. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdih. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.